Ekipa, gospodo Stoltenbergu. Beseda je vaša, tako generalni sekretar. Thank you, Mr. Stoltenberg. Now the floor is yours. Both the Prime Minister and the Secretary General are available for your questions. But please, first of all, introduce yourself and state the name of your media. Spila Novak, Radio Slovenia. Mr. Prime Minister, so considering your words, will Slovenia now more quickly increase uh, the defense funds? and the commentary of the Secretary General. Other allies also do not comply with their commitments. And the second question for Mr. Stoltenberg, considering the climate change and the yesterday's report of the climate panel warns us that we must really take action because the climate change is probably now the biggest threat to security. Don't you think that those funds that go for or climate change should also be considered as funds uh, being spent on defense or security. Thank you for your question. Let me start at the end. You have said that also other allies do not deliver on their commitment. This is just like a child who comes from school and says, well, others have also had the worst mark for their test, not just me. Uh, it's about an increase in the defense um, budget, and not so much for the sake of NATO, but as I have emphasized, for the sake of ourselves. It is about ourselves uh, so that we can have a state that we can be proud of. So that's why we have to fulfill the promises. Uh, the dynamic of an increase in the defense budget will follow the planned path. We have uh, noted down what our objective is. Some allies are already now paying 2% of GDP. Of course, this cannot happen overnight in Slovenia, but of course, we will make our utmost effort to attain our objective of at least 1.5% in a couple of years. Uh, if the situation will allow this, of course. First, on the defense uh, spending, um, I think we have to understand that uh, when we made the co commitment in 2014 uh, to invest more, we didn't promise to spend 2% next year. What we said was that we should stop the cuts after years of declining defense budget. Uh, we promised to stop that trend. Second, uh, we promise to start to increase in real terms. And thirdly, we promise to uh, move towards spending 2% of uh, GDP within a decade, uh, meaning within 2024. The good news is that all allies have stopped the cuts. All allies have started to increase in real terms. And the majority of allies have put forward plans on how to reach uh, 2% by 2024. When we made the pledge, it was only three allies that spent 2% of GDP on defense. Uh, this year, we expect uh, eight allies uh, to uh, spend 2% of GDP uh, on defense. So we are really making progress. I welcome also the fact that Slovenia has at least stopped the cuts and started to increase. But we have to remember that the average now in NATO, it varies uh, so the, uh, how much different allies spend. But the average, if we exclude the United States, is uh, around 1.5%, a bit above 1.5%. Uh, Slovenia is around 1%, and the difference between 1.5 and 1, that's 50%. So that's a significant difference. Uh, so, uh, as I said, I encourage Slovenia to do more, and I am encouraged by the strong messages uh, from uh, uh, the Prime Minister and uh, from the Foreign and Defence Minister. So, so, uh, uh, as I said, this is something we need to do because it's in our security interests uh, with a more assertive Russia and with all the turmoil, the violence we see in the Middle East, fighting Daesh, uh, ISIL, and also uh, to protect our cyber networks and, uh, and uh, address uh, new threats and challenges. Then you asked me about climate change. Well, for me, there is no way we can choose between either addressing our security challenges or addressing climate change. 
We just need to do both. Uh, NATO has recognized that climate change is a security challenge. And that's also uh, the reason why uh, we have expressed uh, uh, a concern about climate change because it can lead to you know, more migration, uh, more instability. Uh, but we cannot say that we either spend on addressing climate change or uh, defense. We just need to do both. And let me also add that uh, in my previous capacity, I worked with climate change as, as Prime Minister of Norway. Uh, and, uh, and then I think we have to remember that to invest in new technologies, to invest in clean uh, production, is the technology and the industry of the future. So it, it, it's, it's, it's prof profitable. It's possible to earn money uh, if you invest in clean and environmentally friendly uh, technology. On top of that, we have to remember that uh, the, the principle we have agreed to in the UN and in other forums is that we need to uh, uh, live by the principle polluter pay or polluters pay principle, meaning that uh, it's not, it's not the state budgets that are going to pay for the investments in green technology. It's the industries, it's uh, you and me, uh, and uh, one of the most effective uh, tools we have in the fight against uh, climate change is carbon pricing. And uh, that actually generates revenue to uh, states' budgets, which can be used then to increase defense spending. So this is a win-win for all of us. Marta Rasborsik, TV Slovenia. Did you also talk about the port of Koper? Is NATO going to use the port of Koper? There is a protest announced in front of the parliament today, so what is your comment? <coughs> about the port of Koper. Mm, uh, there are disinformation, there's disinformation in the public about this, and I am convinced that Slovenia must make use of its good geostrategic position in general, and since NATO is not solely a military organization, but also a political organization, this means that it uh, also uh, creates cooperation, and Slovenia has a very good geostrategic position and can exploit this potential in the future if it wishes so. Uh, we can see many opportunities for this, but of course this does not mean that there will be a base like in Aviano, uh, what I have heard in the public, but this is not true. But as I have said, Slovenia is a member of NATO, and we should state openly that there are there's a number of people in Slovenia who believe that NATO is not an organization, the member of which Slovenia should be. But I always look back into the history and I look back at the 70 years of uh, NATO's history and I conclude that this organization is successful. And let me emphasize once again that we should not throw away the results of the work of our predecessors uh, 15 years ago. Let us not forget uh, the huge success at the referendum at that time. Of course, um, these protests, I understand them as in the spirit of democracy. What kind of a democracy would we be if people wouldn't protest? People have always protested and always will, uh, but it should be uh, the arguments that prevail and not power. Thank you very much. Any other questions? I didn't get the question, to be honest.
Can you repeat the question, please? I apologize. So, uh, the interest of NATO in the port of Copper for transport purposes. Well, that's something we leave to our military authorities to address and to assess uh, what kind of infrastructure and what kind of uh, 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 yeah, infrastructure we, we, we are interested in. So that, I will leave that to our military authorities to comment on that. Okay. Hvala lepa. Še kakšno vprašanje? Lepo zdrav, Jure Kost, delo. Uh, Mr. Saltenberg, uh, according to some indicators, public support for NATO membership in Slovenia uh, has significantly dropped since 2004. Um, are you concerned by this? Um, you recently said in an interview that political debate over NATO should not be feared but welcomed. Um, does that rule apply uh, to all member states, including Slovenia? Um, and the question for the Prime Minister, is the Slovenian membership of NATO still legitimate considering the public opinion polls where we can see uh, that we have less or half of the citizens' uh, support for this? Some people who say that they wouldn't like to be members of this organization also sit in the parliament um, government. So what is your opinion? NATO is an alliance of 29 democracies. And in democracies, there are always different opinions about many issues, and uh, uh, sometimes also about NATO. Uh, and uh, that uh, just reflects the fact that we are democratic societies. Uh, so we have seen in different countries, including my own Norway, that uh, uh, there, there, are, there is discussion about NATO, and uh, also some parties, some political movements want uh, 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 the country uh, to, uh, uh, to leave uh, NATO. But that has always been the case for decades. Uh, and I think that history has shown us that uh, despite those different opinions, despite those different views within NATO allies and between NATO allies, we have always been able uh, to gather and to mobilize uh, the necessary support from all allies and to unite around our core task to protect and defend each other. Uh, so the fact that there is debate, the fact that there is discussion is something I welcome because I believe in open democratic processes. We should not be afraid of that. Uh, in totalitarian regimes, they are afraid of debate. In totalitarian regimes, they are uh, hysterical about uh, different views. I actually believe it is a sign of strength, uh, not weakness, that we have open debates in our uh, countries, including about NATO. Having said that, I, I know that the general uh, trend now is actually increased support for NATO. It varies between different NATO allies, but uh, the support for NATO uh, has increased because people see that we live in a more uh, dangerous world. We see a more, much more assertive Russia using violence against a neighbor, Ukraine, uh, Georgia, uh, a Russia which uh, is responsible for attempts to uh, meddle in our democratic processes, undermine our democratic institutions, and we saw last week how Russian intelligence officers tried to hack the International Organization for Prohibition of uh, Chemical Weapons, an important international institution which is uh, uh, responsible for the convention uh, 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 that prohibits uh, chemical weapons. So I think that not only the use of military force, but also what we call hybrid tactics, cyber, highlights uh, the importance of having a strong NATO uh, 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 defending not only our territories, but also our cyber networks and our democratic institutions. And then we have terrorism, we have ISIL, uh, we have instability, and all that also requires a strong uh, a NATO. So uh, the prime minister uh, mentioned during the lunch that uh, he, was a f he is a firefighter, and that uh, firefighters are not always so very popular, uh, except for when it, uh, there are fires. And that's exactly when uh, we need them. And that's also the case with NATO. Uh, uh, when there is a, 
threats and challenges, then we need a strong NATO, and now there are more threats and challenges, and then the support for NATO has increased. Thank you. About the public support, I would like to tell you that also in the UK, the public has expressed its opinion at the referendum that they would like to exit the European Union, but today we can see that this is not the case because some parties uh, that uh, kept convincing um, the public uh, prior to the referendum that they should exit the EU, this has led to the problems for the entire European Union. The public opinion was also here in Slovenia that I will not be able to constitute the government. So the public opinion is uh, very intangible. And as the Secretary General stated, in democracies, we always have different opinions. And if the left um, wouldn't have a different opinion, then we would maybe be today in the same political party. But we are not today. We are different political parties with different opinions. And this is democracy. And this is what they were fighting for in the 1990. And later with independence. And the public opinion also tells that there is no sense in going to the elections. And that's why the turnout is constantly diminishing. Uh, uh, I have attended all the referenda and all the elections here because I believe that this is my duty. So it's not just about the rights, it's also about the duties. And if we have become members of NATO, then when the time comes and we don't like something in NATO, we should say that we must exit NATO. But I'm asking all those NATO skeptics, what is the alternative? So what else is left there? Maybe these uh, concerns were in place at that time, but not anymore now. So whether we should stay a member of NATO or not was an issue before. But now we should ask ourselves, what can we do to improve NATO? How can we make sure that our voice is heard in NATO? And the same goes for the EU, because I consider that these two in structures, organizations are linked. And as the Secretary stressed, this is a group of democracies. Um, and I hope that we will continue to be a member for a long time. And as I have said, it is completely legitimate to have different opinions. Where all are of equal opinion, this means that um, nobody is using the brains anymore. And I think it is our task, the task of the politics, to uh, prevail with arguments, to convince with arguments those who think that there is no place in the world for this organization. So we need to persuade them so that they will change their minds. As the Secretary General said, the firefighters in Slovenia uh, have been considered drunks, and I can say this because I am a firefighter. We were just considered to be good to organize a, a party of firefighters, but when we had uh, the national disa uh, natural disasters like the sleet and others, uh, then the public opinion up to 80 percent stated that firefighters are heroes. And suddenly, and I uh, very much agree with this. If there are no such incidents, such events, of course, then the awareness about the significance of such an organization diminishes. And I am confident that this organization will work towards this end in the future so that Slovenia will be able to say that it does not regret its membership. And then, by way of conclusion, what is the alternative? Thank you very much. And this concludes the press conference.